If we take a look at this patient here, this is a young man in his uh, early 30s, and these teeth are very, very loose. And you can see here the amount of inflammation that we have. And again, he hasn't, I don't think he's even seen a dentist in maybe his whole life. But he wanted to try and keep his teeth. I gave no guarantees on the teeth. If we keep them, great. If we lose them, we're no further behind than we were at the beginning. We went ahead, we did full metal nap on him, and in a couple of slides you're going to see his maxillary teeth at the same time. This is what he looked like one week later. What you're looking at here, this white area right here, ooh, yeah, my little marker up here, right here, this is our fibrin clot. This is what the clot, that biological bandage I showed you at the beginning, looks like at approximately a week. We know he hasn't brushed. But this is showing the integrity and how long this uh, biological seal lasts. So what happens is with LANAP, we're getting healing from the base of the pocket up, not from the gingival margin down, which happens in scaling and root planning, which is why we can't accomplish what we can with LANAP with, with scaling and root planning. So this is one week post LANAP. Here he is, four weeks post LANAP. Look how nice that tissue looks. We have beautiful margins. Tissue inflammation has come down. He's very maintainable. I'm a periodontist, so I don't profess to do uh, perfect uh, splints here, but it, it accomplished the job we wanted it to do. But these teeth, are we going to keep them? I don't know. But if we look now, seven months later, we can see again, the margin hasn't changed, the tissue's nice and thick, he needs to work on his hygiene a bit, but the teeth are still in his mouth. He hasn't lost the teeth yet. Are we going to lose them? I don't know. I just know that right now we're going to keep them in place for as long as we can. Here is the next slide is showing his maxillary. His maxillary teeth, you can tell now, we have, uh, the, we have the inflammation around here. He has obviously decay from not being uh, um, seeing at a dental office in a long time. But you can imagine if you're the general dentist and you want to try to do fillings around these teeth now, you couldn't do them. Just by looking at them, we know he's going to bleed, which makes it almost impossible to do any type of composites or crowns or anything else. But what if we could get the... the um, the inflammation down first, and then allow for proper restoration. So here he is. Remember, this is the same patient we saw in the mandibular. Here he is a week later. Now you can start seeing here. See how, look at that. See how nice that tissue is starting to look now in this area right here. We get a nice orange rind appearance, but we haven't lost the gum tissue. We haven't lost all this beautiful tissue that allows for proper um, aesthetic work. And now here he is, um, this is about seven months later. You can see the general dentist has started to do some restorative work here, and he's starting to clean up his margins now. And But the nice thing is the papilla is starting to come back a bit. Things are healing in. We have this lovely orange rind appearance. This, is, this gentleman is on the road to recovery in terms of his oral health and keeping his teeth. And we haven't resected anything, and that to me is the most important thing. The next few slides I'm going to show you are slides of just uh, befores and afters of some traditional type of cases that I do LANAP for. And a lot of people think LANAP is really only for these severe cases that we just talked about. If, if, they, if LANAP works very well and can help save the severe cases, imagine what we could do for our mild to moderate cases. The faster we can catch these problems, the better off we are. So if I can treat a mild case or a moderate case with LANAP, the patient's going to be far better off than waiting and waiting and waiting until they become a severe case or even having a traditional gum surgery done. So here are just some cases that I pulled together. And what you can see here is um, we see some um, inflammation around here, definitely some problems going on. And what we're going to do now is we did LANAP on the patient, but I want you to kind of pay attention mostly to where the gingival, margin is, gingival margins are. And so this is what the patient looked like four weeks later. You can see the change in the uh, tissue. The tissue is much pinker. For some reason, LANAP, doing LANAP and working with the periolase gives us a much more denser tissue that is also more resistant to breakdown. So what we see is nice, healthy tissue here in this area here. We haven't really lost any uh, significant amount of uh, uh, attached tissue on the, on the palsal side. You can imagine if we do traditional gum surgery, how much we would have, would have had to remove to get the pockets down. With this, we don't have to remove the gum tissue and expose more root surface, uh, which increases patient sensitivity, chance of caries, etc. 
Here's another patient here. This is actually a lady. She's in her uh, mid-40s. She was referred out for traditional gum surgery. We can see why. She has a lot of inflammation going on, a lot of plaque, calculus. And she was referred for traditional gum surgery. She found me through um, the LANAP website. And we went ahead We went ahead and did uh, traditional. We did LANAP on her. She was very happy with it and because we didn't have to cut away the tissue. And this is what she looked like. This is just one quadrant what she looked like about four weeks later. She may have to work on her hygiene just a bit, but again, you can see we haven't really lost any gum tissue. Occlusal adjustment, you can see on the, um, on the fillings, that's very, very important. Uh, you want to make sure everything's uh, stable when we do uh, LANAP, after we do LANAP, to give the bone a chance to uh, heal up and to get a connected tissue attachment to the root surface. So this patient was very happy. She's in a great maintenance program now, and she's keeping her teeth without losing any gum tissue. So we've seen some clinical slides, but let's see what's going on underneath now. So the next, uh, the next set of slides I'm going to show you are, are basically we're going to see the x-rays and we're going to see the probing depths and how LANAP can help us decrease the pocket depth to much more maintainable levels. So if we look at this x-ray first, uh, this x-ray is one of my first patients with, that I did uh, LANAP on. This is probably about maybe three months after I've gotten I've gotten my uh, delivery of my laser and had my training, and this is. But these are the type of results you can get straight out of the gate, which is the wonderful thing about LANAP. It's a very specific protocol. Follow the protocol, you get the results that are promised, and that's what I love about it. So what we have here, you can see again, he has a lot of he has severe bone loss in through these areas here. He's actually a two pack a week smoker, and again, what we what we offer him in a traditional gum surgery procedure, well. He's probably a lot of extractions, probably a lot, a significant amount of um, exposed to, tooth surface. And again, he wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy. And it would just be a long-term type of sensitivity that he'd have to work with. Well, we went ahead, did a little nap on him, and I'm going to show you his pocket depths now. And I know it's hard to read. This is a this is a, a simple. Um, uh, uh, this is from Dentrix. This is an exam comparison. I'm going to blow up now the upper and lower right side, just to kind of give you an example of what we're looking at. So you can see on December 18th, 2006, he had a lot of sixes, eights, sevens, nines. In fact, on number two on the distal, he had at least a 10. That's what those little uh, greater than signs mean in Dentrix. Anything more than nine, it just sticks the chevron in there. But now if we look here, we went from a 10, a minimum of a 10 down to a five, went from a seven to a four, Here's a 9 that went to a 3. Um, I could keep going. Here's another 10 down to a 4. We're getting a greater than 50% uh, pocket depth reduction and over 90% of the pockets. And, again, basically saved his mouth without losing the gum tissue, without resection, and that to me is very, very important. So, Dr. Dr. Honigman, this is uh, Dr. Bloor interrupting for a moment. I'm s sorry to interrupt your flow here, but I'm just amazed by the changes for these patients that you've shared to date. What has this meant for you as a periodontist with regards to your case acceptance? Well, case acceptance has actually gone up. I didn't, uh, when I first got the laser, I wasn't uh, prepared to have all the cases accepted as much as I, as much as I expected, actually, um, because once patients find out that there's no cutting and no sewing, all of a sudden, that you can just see the anxiety drain from their face when you say, look, I can do this with a laser and we're not going to do, uh, we're not going to be cutting and removing gum tissue. And I think that is the patient's biggest fear is the minute they hear they're being referred to the periodontist, what they're hearing is, I need gum surgery. And when you can tell them we're going to do surgery but with a laser and we're not going to use a scalpel or, or sutures, they're much more, I get a higher, a much higher acceptance rate. Um, than uh, when I did when I was doing traditional gum surgery. Also, interesting enough, and you'll see in some later slides, my, the cost of the patients actually go down because I'm not doing any as much uh, bone regeneration procedures because you'll see in probably another five or six slides how we get bone regeneration with LANAP. And that, to me, is amazing and doesn't matter how many times I've, I see it, I still get very excited when I see bone growth in vertical defects and the patients see it in my face how excited I get about it, too. 